<laughs> what is this? Oh, tight, 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 yeah! Oh, blue, yellow, pink, whatever, man, just keep bringing me that. Every once in a while, there's a project that made me feel we're just scrapping the surface with generative AI. And small AI is definitely one of those projects. It got more than 8,000 stars on GitHub in just five days, and it is one of the fastest growing open source AI projects. So what is small AI? It is basically an AI that write codes for you. And it's different from asking ChatGPT to write some simple code snippet. It actually built out entire code base for even very complicated apps. It's almost like having the whole engineer team in your pocket. And here is a quick example. I asked GPT-4 to write a product requirement doc for a classic snake game. And then pass on those requirements to the small AI and ask it to build this app. And boom, I just got a snake game that's fully functional from small AI. If I have more requirements, I can just come back and add more stuff. And I can ask it to build multiple things, for example, a simple calculator apps, and it will also automatically build a app for me. So how does this small AI work? When you're looking through their code base, it's actually very straightforward. First, they pass the product requirement into a prompt. They will generate architecture of the apps, so what are different files we need to create. And then it will pass this list of files as well as original product requirement to another prompt that will generate a list of dependencies so that GPT can understand what are the different functions and variables in different files. And in the end, it will run this for loop where it will pass on both the product requirement, architecture, and the dependency to a new prompt that will actually write the code for each individual file. And that's pretty much it. But to be honest, at this moment, it's still quite buggy. Most of the time you will have some bugs or generate some code that require modification to actually run properly. And I'm going to show you how can you run small AI without those bugs step by step. Firstly, let's set it up. You can go to small AI GitHub, which I post a link in the description, and you will first say git clone this repo on your local machine. And then you will open the folder in your Visual Studio, and there should be a .example.env file. You will rename this to env and put in your OpenAI API key here. And before you actually run small AI, this one last step you should do is install Modo. Modo is basically a cloud computing platform where you're gonna run small AI. Once that's done, it's pretty much all set. You can open the terminal and run this command line, Modo and prompt. After that, you can add your own prompt, like write a web app for to do. But on the other side, what I would recommend you to do is actually create an MD file, which is basically a documentation and put all the product requirement here so that it'll be easier for you to update the requirement and you can just run prd.md. If you just start using small AI like this, quite often you will see some errors and those errors are mainly due to the rate limit of OpenAI. I think that's because when small AI is running, it will call OpenAI API multiple times simultaneously. That's why it exceeds the rate limit. But thanks to another YouTuber called Anubis AI, he actually modified the main.p code and add some delay between every API call. So it won't trigger this error. I put a modified code in the description below so that you can copy and paste in here just to override the whole main.py file. Now we finish the setup. The next step is get the product requirement. You can write simple product requirement by yourself, but to make sure small AI actually produce the results you want, you actually need to add a lot more details to it. What I normally do is I will go to ChatGPT and ask GPT-4 to help me write down the whole product requirement doc, which including the core functionalities, interface descriptions, as well as the file structure. And I can just copy those requirements, put it into this MD file that we just created, and then run this model run main.py prompt prd.md. You can see here it already identified what kind of files they need to create, as well as break down all the shared dependencies, including the variables, data schema, DOM element, and function names. This whole process is going to take a while. For some complicated apps, it can take like 15 to even 40 minutes. But here's also another tip I want to share. What I noticed that at this stage, it's still pretty buggy in terms of making sure the function writing in the file A is also compatible with file B. So for 90% of the time, for the whole code base it generated, it didn't work out of the box. However, if I ask it to write everything into just one file, then it'll work magically. Like 80 to 90% of the time, the code it generated, it just worked out of the box. So in the requirement, I will often say that it should only have one file that include everything. And that's exactly what I did here. So now, since it is finished, the file it generated will be under this generated folder. And if we run this, it is a snake game out of box. It has all the features that keep a snake move and it has a function to generate food and also have a way to keep a score. And the last thing I want to mention is that they not only provide a way to generate the code, they actually provide a way to debug the code as well. 
So if I add another window here, I can run another command line called modal run debugger.py at a prompt. Here's where I can add any arrow I saw when I'm running the code. And same thing, I can put the arrows here in prompt directly, but I can also create debug.md and then you can add the arrows you saw. And you can run this modal.run debugger.py prompt debug.md. And then you can see it will start giving me analysis of the potential arrows and how can I fix it. So it's like having both engineer who generate code and also a debugger at the same time. That's pretty cool. And this is a small AI developer. As I mentioned, it is a little bit buggy. It's not capable to produce a very complicated apps out of box yet. So I don't think it's going to replace a real engineer with its current format. However, as a product designer and product manager, I'm really excited about this. Because if I want to user test a certain product ideas, I can ask it to build a prototype very, very quickly and test with real users for almost zero cost. But on the other side, you can think about how this whole ecosystem start composed on top of each other. We already see AI that can design the user interface and it's very easy for AI to produce product requirement doc and do research. So I think it's very possible that in future, we can have the whole AI product team that including both product manager, product designer, engineer, QA, out of box, and can run lots of different experiments for you autonomously. So I'm very excited to see what are the interesting apps that you ask small AI to do and comment below for any ideas you have. Thank you and see you next time.